This will summarize the research article titled Randomized Controlled Trial of Durotomy as an adjunct to routine decompressive surgery for dogs with severe acute spinal cord injury. To start with the introduction, spinal cord injury SCI has been the focus of extensive research over several years. Unfortunately, established therapies capable of significantly improving outcomes are limited. Currently, surgical decompression and physical therapy remain the primary treatment options for SCI patients. SCI causes perfusion disruption and results in tissue loss. This cascade of molecular events involves an impairment of the sodium-potassium exchange mechanism, leading to fluid accumulation within the spinal cord. This fluid accumulation increases intraspinal pressure ISP further hindering tissue Perfusion. Administering pharmaceutical agents to treat SCI has proved challenging due to difficulties in transportation. A potential alternative method could be epidural administration of the drug. Another treatment option that has been investigated for over a century involves incising the meninges, dural incision, or durotomy. Incising the meninges reduces ISP and improves gray matter survival in rats. Clinical studies have demonstrated that duraplasty reduces ISP and improves outcomes in human SCI patients. Dogs with acute SCI from disc herniation frequently present with a combined contusive compressive spinal cord lesion. A subpopulation of these dogs, approximately 20%, suffer suprasacral lesions leading to complete loss of motor and sensory function in hind quarters. Of these cases, only 50% regain independent ambulation with conventional treatment. The benefits of durotomy for dogs with severe SCI have been investigated in experimental and clinical veterinary medicine, with few conclusive results. Two recent observational studies suggest that durotomy may improve recovery of ambulation in these dogs. Canine models of severe SCI have been proposed as suitable for testing potential new treatments. Before testing on human patients, a randomized controlled veterinary trial was conducted to compare the proportion of dogs recovering independent ambulation with traditional decompressive surgery to those who underwent additional durotomy. Going through the methods, this trial compared traditional spinal surgery to the addition of durotomy, surgical incision of the dura in the treatment of severe spinal cord injuries sees in dogs caused by acute intervertebral disc herniation. The trial, approved by the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee, was designed to be pragmatic to enhance the generalizability of the results. Dogs with severe acute thoracolumbar seas caused by disc herniation were included in the study. The dogs had an absence of apparent conscious perception of severe noxious stimuli, using smooth surface pliers to create crushing injury on the pelvic limb digits and tail. The study population resembled human thoracic AIS grade A patients in terms of neurological deficits and severity. Dogs that had previously undergone surgical decompression for thoracolumbar disc herniation were excluded, as were dogs with diabetes mellitus, hyperadrenocorticism or severe concomitant diseases. Control dogs underwent routine cross-sectional imaging to identify the herniated disc, followed by disciplinary spinal surgery. The trial intervention was durotomy after routine cross-sectional imaging and removal of herniated disc material. The trial aimed to determine the effectiveness of durotomy. In the recovery of ambulation in these dogs, the length of the durotomy was fixed at four vertebral lengths to allow for a compromise between decompression over the full length of the swollen spinal cord and limiting surgical time to promote surgeon participation. The first incision in the dura was generally made with the bevel of a fine-gauge hypodermic needle, and then enlarged using a number 12 blade, the bevel of a hypodermic needle, iris, or castro viejo scissors or by tearing the edges with jewelers, forceps, the dura was left open, permitting free flow of CSF. Outcome measures involved determining the ability of a dog to take 10 consecutive steps in the pelvic limbs without falling within six months of their surgical intervention. Recovery of pain perception in the pelvic limbs was not recorded to avoid difficulties with dog owners' interpretation or the need for dogs to be returned to clinics for veterinary evaluation. The weight of evidence favors early spinal surgery after SCI, but there is still some controversy surrounding timing in both humans and dogs. So exploratory analysis of recovery of ambulation and interaction between durotomy and the time interval from presentation to the surgical clinic and completion of surgery were included in the trial. The study aimed to collect 360 cases, but recruitment was adversely affected by the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. Interim analyses with conservative stopping rules were implemented at one-third of the proposed total recruitment, with intentions to continue with subsequent analyses at 67% and 100% of the total study population if appropriate. Logistic regression would be used to calculate the odds ratio of recovery in the two groups to determine the effectiveness of the neurotomy. In veterinary medicine, dogs with acute SCI are first examined by general practitioners and then referred to specialist neurosurgical clinics for diagnosis and treatment, thereby incurring a delay of several hours before surgery is possible. At specialist clinics, affected, dogs undergo cross-sectional imaging and then are immediately taken for disciplinary spinal surgery by dorsolateral hemilaminectomy for removal of the herniated material from the epidural space. Post-operative care includes standard nursing for the surgical site, bladder, bowel, and the skin plus pain control. The trial was multi-centered, and each center randomized their dogs independently of other centers. After a suitable case was identified by the attending clinician, informed consent was obtained from dog owners. For those cases that were enrolled, the treatment allocation was achieved through opening a pre-prepared opaque envelope containing either traditional or durotomy instruction. Dogs at each contributing center were analyzed according to the treatment they actually received. Demographic data were summarized, and STATA-18 was used for all summary statistics, sample size calculation, and data analysis. For the results, in the 3.5 years since the trial began, we successfully enrolled 141 dogs, with 128 receiving appropriate follow-up. Among the 100 28, two were excluded for disc herniation outside the study region, while 11 cases, 6 durotomy, 5 traditional, were lost to follow up. About 41% 52 of the dogs were dachshunds, a breed known to be susceptible to acute disc herniation. The groups were well balanced in terms of demographic characteristics and preoperative variables. Out of 128 cases, 65 recovered ambulation and 63 did not. The proportion of dogs that recovered following traditional surgery alone, 56%, 35 out of 62, or durotomy, 45%. 30 out of 66 were within the ranges reported previously. Logistic regression showed an unadjusted odds ratio for recovery of 0.643, 95% confidence interval, 0.320 to 1.292, and z-score of 1.24 for durotomy versus traditional surgery alone. We conducted an interim analysis at the one-third mark of our projected sample recruitment, as the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic disrupted clinical services and slowed down recruitment. The raw data indicated that durotomy had slightly worse outcomes than traditional surgery, so the analysis focused on futility. The z-score for unadjusted logistic regression was 1.24, which was less than the futility bound of 0.025, 
indicating that the data collected so far had no significant difference between the benefits of durotomy and traditional surgery. Therefore, we terminated the trial at this stage. The exploratory analysis suggests that delay in surgery after presentation to the surgical clinic is overall associated with detrimental effects. Odd ratio, 0.905, 95% confidence interval, 0.842 to 0.974, P equals 0.007. However, there was no significant interaction between the interval to completion of surgery and type of surgery. Odd ratio, 1.016, 95% confidence interval, 0.879 to 1.174, P equals 0.833, which means the timing of surgery does not affect the relative efficacy of derotomy versus traditional decompression. Out of the 128 dogs included, 8% 10 developed progressive myelomalacia and were euthanized, with 4 dogs in the derotomy group and 6 in the traditional surgery group. Going through the discussion, the proportion of dogs that recover from spinal cord injuries sees in this population is 51%, which is slightly lower than the typical reported rate. Although previous observational data suggested that a dural incision derotomy could potentially increase recovery in dogs with acute thoracolumbar SCI, a randomized trial has shown that this approach is ineffective and may even have negative effects. It is possible that the discrepancy between this trial and previous reports is due to summary outcomes that tend to be more extreme when analyzed analyzing small samples, especially in observational data. In experimental animals, the effect of derotomy on intraparenchymal pressure is not large, and it is unlikely to be sufficient in restoring blood flow that is compromised due to raised intradural pressure. The blood flow is affected by numerous biochemical cascades that compromise both blood vessel integrity and interluminal cross-sectional area. Thus, eliminating the constricting effect of the dura may not be enough to restore blood flow. Cyan dogs is often considered as a clinically relevant model to assess the efficacy of various therapeutic interventions before clinical trials in humans. The results of this study in dogs suggest that dural incision in human patients will not promote functional restoration. However, the clinical trial on duraplasty for severe SCI in humans differs in several important ways from this dog trial and may impact the outcomes. For instance, the human trial focuses on cervical lesions, is testing duraplasty instead of durotomy, and the length of durotomy varies between patients. An unclosed durotomy, as in this dog trial, may promote adhesions between the pill surface and external tissue and might have a deleterious effect on functional recovery. This risk should be largely avoided in human patients who routinely undergo duraplasty. While delayed decompressive surgery DS may be associated with poorer outcomes suggests, many observational analyses of human SCI, our exploratory analysis supports the concept that time is fine. However, the reliability of this aspect of our analysis is uncertain, because the study was not powered to detect this effect. In veterinary medicine, it has also been suggested that derotomy may reduce the likelihood of development of progressive myelomalacia in dogs after severe disc-associated SCI. However, an adequately powered study requires many hundreds of cases to be definitive, and we cannot draw conclusions from the low number of affected dogs in this data set. Many eligible dogs were not randomized in this study. The reason for non-enrollment was largely because owners declined or, more commonly, clinicians forgot to mention the trial to the owners. Although it is not optimal that many cases were not enrolled, their non-inclusion was not systematic and would therefore appear unlikely to affect the central conclusion. The study's primary aim was to compare outcomes between traditional DS and derotomy, and there is no reason to believe that there will be a differential incidence of spinal walking between these treatment groups. The surgical DS was not standardized because the study's question is whether derotomy adds benefit to traditional decompression as selected by an experienced veterinary neurosurgeon, and it promotes generalizability of the study results. Although the lack of standardization may have altered the calculated difference in outcome between techniques, it still supports a generalizable conclusion that overall, derotomy is not superior to conventional DS. To conclude, the study indicates that derotomy is not helpful in improving outcomes post-severe acute thoracolumbar SCI in dogs. If this predicts ineffective duraplasty outcomes in humans cervical SCI, it would show that SCI in dogs is useful as a model for other therapies.